something new This is the start of something magical This is the start of something new This is the start of something true This is the start of something Okay. Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live stream. Let us know if you can hear us well. And of course, where you're watching us from today, it's a special episode because we're going to talk about the matrix. Yeah. What is the matrix? We often talk about the matrix, especially, you know, the people who are kind of going down the rabbit hole and waking up to what's going on in the world. We tend to talk about the matrix as in almost referring to society as the matrix. And we talk about leaving the matrix or escaping it. And we want to talk about that with Ram from our perspective, how actually we can't really escape the matrix. And we want to want to share with you our perspective to what it even is yeah. and how we can deal with it. Yeah. Hello, Alona. Nice hey, to Alona. have you. Hey, Alona. Nice to have you with us. I wonder if you guys who are watching us ever feel like you're Neo in the Matrix. If yeah. you know the movie The Matrix, you probably do. Yeah. You know. Um, and if you can relate to this, like when you know something and you look around, it seems like nobody is aware of that. Right. Yeah, so. And when you start sharing or you expose that you know, people turn to you like you're you're a crazy. trader, that you're crazy, <laughs> kind of like in the Matrix, you know, people are turning to look at you, look at Neo. And it's also that, you know, feeling of <clears throat> you suddenly woke up to a horrible reality. You suddenly see things like he wakes up in that, you know, place controlled by AI and mm. it can feel that way when you begin to see you know putting together one plus one and seeing what's happening all around the world and nobody sees it yeah you know it can really feel that way nice um I can't say your name but welcome from New Zealand and uh, if you feel like helping us promoting this video just give it like and that will make uh, YouTube algorithm suggested to more of our YouTube community and get ready to dive with us the rabbit hole <laughs> Are you waiting for me to talk? <laughs> He's preparing some wisdom bombs for you. <laughs> well, of you us. know, we we do tend to look at society as the matrix, like everything that's happening. But actually, the way we see it is that matrix, the matrix is basically our illusion of reality that reality is solid and basically the matrix is projected into existence by our subconscious. It is our subconscious beliefs, our patterning, our programming and our trauma. So basically everything that we might refer to as the matrix, it is that almost like a machine that just operates, that things just happen to us. And that's the, you know, it's cre all created 
shaped by our subconscious minds, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And it feels that way as though it's an external thing that operates outside of ourselves because we are not conscious of that creation. We are not aware that we're creating it because it's created by the unconscious. So really the way to begin to understand the matrix and to start becoming the creator of your life, kind of like, you know, when Neo in the matrix, he starts to consciously download programs where he actually, he is able to like fight like a ninja and he is able to jump massive distances on the rooftops. He is be being, you know, he's programming himself. He is becoming aware of how he is creating reality. So that's, you know, the starting point to understanding the matrix and un getting control over your reality. Yeah. And we're going to talk also about the key in this uh, dynamic, which is basically understanding our trauma and our programming, which is, of course, childhood and society and all these things that affect us to believe that reality is a certain way. And the amazing thing about it now that there's so many like scientific study and scientific research pointing to the same spiritual truth that many mysters and many spiritual teachers were teaching for so long. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're gonna share like how we are working on it to entangle ourselves from this. Untangle. Yeah, untangle. <laughs> Not to get more entangled. <laughs> yeah, so really the the way to get more entangled <laughs> into the matrix is to fight it. Yeah. Is to believe that it is an external force that you need to fight. Because when you fight anything, when you come with that energy of resistance or, you know, um, you're basically solidifying it as an opposing force to you because everything in the universe if everything in the universe is you you can't escape anything you really can't escape anything the more you try to escape something like spider web. the more it's gonna come at you because the universe wants to integrate and it is actually your soul who wants to understand itself as everything so the more you push something away the more it's gonna come at you from every direction so and also Another thing that's going to get us more entangled in the matrix, which is simply everything that happens that feels like it's happening to us that we don't understand, um, is to be, to get trapped in fear. Mm -hmm. Because when we're in fear, we are unconsciously manifesting low vibrational things into our reality. Because everything in your external has to be a vibrational match to you. Whatever happens to you, is a vibrational match to you. And if you are in a fear state operating from fear, you are in a low vibrational state. And you will manifest things that feel like, you know, that you don't want, and mm -hmm. therefore it will feel like they're happening to you, and therefore you will feel like a victim. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerless um, loop that we go when, when we are trapped in this fear, like vibration, we feel like, oh, another damn thing gonna hit me or something another thing gonna happen to me and the power is actually moving out of this uh, low vibration which is fear and the key of going out of it is to look within and see what's actually the trauma that's locking us in that mm -hmm. in that pattern right so mm. matrix really lives inside of us the matrix is not outside of us the matrix is our own programming that yeah. we need to dissolve because that programming is what is creating the external reflection of that for example if we see authority in the external it's kind of like the agents of the matrix right yeah. authority and we think we have to fight the authority that is simply us believing that there is external authority to us as if that's even a valid concept. You know what? It isn't. <laughs> external authority is not a valid concept in the universe. It's an invention by humans who want to have control over others. 
so then the key in in that example in dissolving that part of the matrix is to deal with the programming within you that believes that you are smaller than others that someone can have power over you that you are not powerful mm -hmm. and as you dissolve that programming you remember that whoa i'm the creator here i'm infinitely powerful and i'm sovereign no one can have power over me and that reflection in the external begins to dissolve yeah. of course the external matrix is a co-creation as well that's another you know tricky part of the equation um where yes, we create our own reality. And at the same time, we are co-creating this earthly reality. Yeah. And by the way, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Gentle Earth, thank you for the reminder. Thank you for being here again. You were here last time as well. <sighs> yeah. So to really notice if you are at the moment in the grips of the matrix, a good way to see that is if you are feeling like things are happening to you, if you are feeling fear about the external events, um, if you are, if you find yourself polarizing me against, it's me against the authority or me against the, the V or, or, or me against the people who take the V or, you know, it's you know all just be, right? yeah it's it's all the, the polarization hi guys love from fuerteventura canary islands oh. i wonder if you were here last time as well i remember someone was asking about fuerteventura mm. hi yeah so this is a topic that we have been working on mm -hmm. in the past years really going within whenever there is something where we might see that oh the matrix is mm. out to get us yeah we go within and i see this um dynamic and uh, this relief a lot in people who are still kind of like living in the city and they want to move out they want to like kind of escape the matrix but they're doing it only in an external way like oh i'm gonna save money i'm gonna buy land i'm gonna build house and live off grid and not see all these unconscious people around me yeah that you might actually survive this way but you're actually pushing part of reality of your reality away because you are also creator of what's happening in the city and to unplug yourself from the matrix doesn't mean only to go off grid but also to do the inner work when you do the inner work your perception of the world would change and you would have love and this is how you know actually if you are living in outside the matrix or not if you are having love to any condition that's happening outside you i know it's easier said than done but it's a process that we all going through all this awakening being i'm sure you are one of them <laughs> and, and another you know thing is that if we try to escape the matrix from that place of like oh i hate this unconscious people i hate the government i hate the system i'm gonna you know escape your own conditioning is just gonna follow you and you will manifest different things it might not be in the same form but you will manifest the matrix in a micro scale yeah. wherever you go because it lives inside of you you're constantly projecting it out outward yeah. and the key is really to realize that whoa it is not the external that i need to fight yeah and this is part of our vision for the new earth and we are all like new earthlings creating this with us so our vision is to create this inside out this is how we can make fundamental shift and it doesn't have to be like off grid it could be in the city it could be in the middle of this vortex of mind control of whatever you want to call it it could be you can have this stillness and this awareness that you're the creator of this reality in the middle of the city and actually that might have like a bigger impact on others so yeah of course at some point many people feel called to just leave this uh, babylon life and come here and to the like nature and be in harmony and start hugging trees <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so a little bit about how 
how those programs get created in the first place. How do we create that entangled web of matrix that we project out? It is the entanglement within our own consciousness, and it all starts the moment we enter the womb. Because the moment we enter the womb, we begin to take in and absorb the energy of our mother and the way she relates to the world. And also the energy we begin to form our perspective of reality based on, um, you know, the energies that we perceive outside. And of course, then we all have birth trauma, which is our first real imprint about this physical world. Mm -hmm. The way we were born, we, like you would be surprised how many of us, that most of us, in fact, we carry huge imprints mm -hmm. about life based on the way we were born. Yeah, it's so amazing the way all the hospitals and all the clinics, they practice birth it's just so traumatic and i'm sure many of you have done inner work so might have remembered um, your birth trauma which is yeah it's really usually it it imprint us with a lot of powerlessness and disconnection and yeah like a lot of heavy beliefs about the world that's like cold or disconnected or um lonely so yeah and then you know Talking about trauma, the birth trauma is mo mostly the first trauma. The tr first trauma could also happen already in the womb, but it's somewhere around there that we all experience our first trauma. And what happens in the moment of trauma is that um, if the experience is too overwhelming and there is no one to hold space for us, which is, you know, if there would be someone who could feel us to give us the, uh, their presence, we might be able to resolve that intense emotional state and come out of it but oftentimes there is no resolution and when there is no resolution we cannot survive and stay in the trauma traumatic traumatic state which means that we may, we have to fragment mm -hmm. we have to dissociate from the traumatized part of ourselves from the part who is stuck in that let's say the baby who is full of uh how do you say uh sedatives from the birthing process and gets like dropped into this cold air where it's taken away it's poked with injections it's completely traumatizing and the body goes into this you know fight or flight mode and tenses up and pos possibly freezes mm. and there's no resolution we dissociate and that freeze stays within the body and it is that freeze frozen state from which we are creating part of our consciousness is still creating, creating more scenarios that bring up that free state to, to be resolved. And if we're not aware that we have that, you know, traumatized part within us that is frozen, all the events that happen that bring up that free state, they feel like bad things are happening to me. You know, there are all these scary things that, you know, I, and I just like go into this panic state, but actually it is just the universe trying to get you to integrate and to resolve that. It's a Unresolved trauma state. It's a reminder. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? I would be so curious to hear how you perceive this yeah. topic. Are you aware of your trauma, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. I know many of you coming from videos like community building and I think trauma come mostly in interaction with others, like with other people. So if you're planning to live in a community or already living in a community, you might have come like in a face with facing your trauma and people around you. So we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. You know, and the way that we actually allow our parents and school systems and society to program us, because as children, our first intuition is that we know, <clears throat> we know that it doesn't make sense what we're told. We know that we are not just little boys and girls, you know, with a name. We know we feel ourselves as much bigger, much larger than that. And we know when things don't make sense. But because of the threat of punishment and disconnection, and this is the most that this is where they have us. This is where we allow ourselves to be programmed because we 
desperately want to belong and to be loved and to have connection. Because disconnection is the most painful thing in this universe, mm -hmm. to be away from unity. So in order to, you know, we are grasping on to that unity as children, wanting to be united. So we accept the programming because the other option would be if we refuse the program, we would face disconnection. We're punished by this disconnection mm -hmm. from our parents, from the school system, later our friends, bosses, you know, so that's our, let's say that's our Achilles heel as humanity, as humans is our need and desire for unity and connection. So if someone can threaten us by isolating us, by disconnecting from us, we quite quickly abandon ourselves to have that, mm -hmm. to keep that connection. Okay, so someone is commenting here. Ravel, before birth trauma also exists such as from previous lives. Oh yeah, previous incarnations where an enormously vast number of individuals were have been killed in slaughterhouses in war as hunted, eaten alive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was referring to the trauma we experience in this life, but you're right. We do, in fact, um, ha have a lot of carry on. traumatic yes. imprints on a, on a deep level. Do we always attract people and situations and things that trigger aspects that we are ready to integrate? I think so. I would say so. And you know what? <sighs> if we resist, we might feel that we are not ready to integrate it and we might push it away and push it away and push it away. And um, it doesn't mean that we get away with it just because we think we are not ready. That's why, you know, shitty things happen that we might judge as shitty, such as getting a cancer, because we pushed away the emotion for so, for so long. long. And we had every chance to integrate it and we didn't because maybe we didn't feel ready, but we still don't escape it just because we don't feel ready. Mm -hmm. It's going to, you know, come biting us in the ass because, and it's not a punishment. Really, it's not a punishment. It is that we, our higher selves, want to integrate. This is what we wanted for this life. We said, I want to integrate that thing. And if our earthly self keeps avoiding it our whole lives, it's actually on a higher level, it's in our own best interest that something dramatic happens that forces us to integrate that thing. Oh. <laughs> <Okay. sighs> yeah, we have, by the way, two videos of, or three videos about integration and parts work, basically, like those stuck part, parts in the trauma held us back from being our true authentic self and when we go there and integrate those parts and update them like hey you i'm here for you and give a presence and love to those parts this is how we can integrate those mm. parts and coming more to our center self or our mm. integrated self where it's free from the programming and free from the matrix mm. and this is a tool that we all have access to can watch our videos about it you can find them in the description below and uh, yeah yeah in the day-to-day -day, really i would say the first step towards dissolving your internal matrix is to start coming into presence with what is inside of you to withdraw your attention away from projections to withdraw your attention away from what's happening out there back towards our internal world because then we're not entangled we're not reacting we can we need to we need to become aware of our internal truth and to be able to hold space and be present with our internal experience and that includes uncomfortable emotions and uncomfortable experiences that's the very first thing to do is to learn to be with uncomfortable experiences and to be fully present in your own reality in your own experience internally and trust also that it won't end up bad <laughs> because the reason we we don't go there is because we have like a big fear about like oh 
if I surrender to this fear or to this pain, I'm going to stay with it forever. It's not the case. Min asks, why are so sad, guys? You mean us? <laughs> I do have sadness in me, actually. And I did um, have some sadness this morning. And, you know, it's such a spiral. Like, even if we process a lot of emotions, the more we integrate, the more emotions are going to come up. Because sadness is like, especially grief, it's like that coming back to yourself and acknowledging what happened to you, acknowledging the hurt that you've been through. Mm -hmm. So the more you integrate, the more you yeah. will feel. You will feel, you'll just, it's not like you stop yeah. feeling, you become better at feeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there is nothing wrong with sadness. Like we, we don't want to like send this image that you are always happy and light and yeah. all this like bypassing uh, that many actually spiritual teacher and spiritual awakening beam mm. but out this image that we are always happy it's not the case and mm. if we are true to ourselves, like what's happening to the world like i personally feel a lot of sadness of everything happening around us all the suppression all the uh, misleading information that we are faced with all the people who are getting like sick for not having access to real information of course i would feel sadness for that and mm. i think that's part of our human experience to be real and to feel the sadness and to feel the love and to feel mm. the grief and to yeah so yeah you might pick up on sadness but also important for you i think mina brought the question to look also within you if you feel the sadness in other do you also feel sad mm -hmm. do you also feel grief do you also feel maybe heard of what's happening in the world mm -hmm. yeah, yeah what's happening to the animals what's happening to other brothers and sisters around this world so yeah yeah so quite, quite often when we see things in others it can actually be a projection of yes it may, may be in them but it may also be what we are projecting out because we don't want to feel it within ourselves mm -hmm. because for example right now i feel also peace i feel also love Mm. and i feel sad so yeah. it's it's a process to hold things. to hold emotion for to hold space for all this emotion within us because it's not just like oh i'm happy now there's like so many inner children so if you became aware of them you'll see how much rainbows you have mm. inside you <laughs> Steffi said she's what she's shopping she, no she stopped watching news that's awesome she says she has to stop watching the news oh, i think okay. that's a great yeah. idea because the news outlet it's a very specific form of programming yeah. and it transmits a very specific vibration which is a very low vibration and unless you yeah. are fully in charge of your own vibration it will most likely affect you negatively yeah, you absolutely. might want to watch it um if you are very centered you might be able to watch news for educational purposes without it affecting you <laughs> <laughs> like out of curiosity oh what are they feeding us today <laughs> yeah i i have to admit that even myself like considering myself aware of my feelings i watched some like a, a program like, from deutsche Welle, and it took it took me so like in this like downward spiral where i said like oh country are disconnected and now uh, the usa and china are gonna fight and get kind of result like all this idea were not present in me. I just like watching it for five minutes. I feel like how it drained my energy to experience the disconnection of the world and to see like how this um, like st media streams are putting a lot of fear and disconnection beliefs in us. So I stopped it and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. that was a hit. So imagine if people watching this all time, like many people watching hours upon hours, especially in this lockdown, so yeah it's crazy how much influence mm -hmm. they have on us if we give our power to them so stop watching them watch us instead <laughs> gentle earth saying grieving as well yeah yeah thank you for being willing to feel yeah exactly because that's the way we're gonna dissolve this this mess really uh, the external mess that we've created is that we begin to feel we're willing to feel and then act from a place of integrity with what we feel 
And then like when we face, when integrate the sadness, there's like a lot of openness, a lot of joy, like real joy coming mm -hmm. up. It's not like, oh, I, I don't want to feel sad. I push it away, suppress it. And then I feel like, ah, oh, I'm joyful. That's a yeah. fake joy. And you can, yeah. like, if you are empathic, you can feel people when they are, like, representing this fake feelings outside there. So, yeah, integration of all your emotions. And let us know if you have any other question before we close the chat and the live stream today. That's fun. We to could have. stay here for hours, but we've been here for half an hour now, and I think that's um, yeah. that's that's long enough for today. And uh, if you like, join our uh, uh, if you like to join us in our next group session, we are having uh, the conscious manifester again, and the next topic about financial abundance, like how to mm. resolve resistance to anything that holding you back so check it out and it's in the description below and yeah thank you so much for watching us and hopping in and uh you can still write your comments even after this yeah. and we will uh read them all and try to answer as well yeah love you guys thank you for joining today. yeah so much love to you